welcome to Saturday Live at the Backyard Bird Center. Uh, I, I advertised yesterday that we were going to be talking about bird names. And because we get this asked a lot, especially when we're out bird watching, but also like a picture like this. And we get sent in pictures like this, uh, get it, and this stimulates conversation about why, how names are birds, why na who names the birds, uh, where they get them from, because this is the, one of the most confusing conundrum, name conundrums in the bird world. The real red-headed woodpecker over there with the entirely red head and the red-bellied woodpecker, and you can't usually see the, the red on the belly, and it is there, but this is an example of how did the red belly get away? You know, why is this red called red belly? Well, it actually does have a red belly. So I thought I'd do a program about that and some of the more common names. And if you've got a, a bird, I may not, you can uh, type it in now or you can send a, an email if there is a bird you're curious about. But right now, what we're uh, going to do is going to uh, talk a, kind of a little bit about the history and who does that and then some of the birds that, that are, are examples of that. So uh, first things first, um, you got to remember that most of the birds in this country were named back in the 1700s initially, and then some of them have changed. We're going to talk a little bit about that. But John James Audubon, this is John James Audubon, who named a great deal of the birds in this uh, in this country. Now there were other famous ornithologists that named them back in that that era too. But you, you know, whenever you're the first to do a lot of this stuff, like in Audubon was to explore many parts of the country and, and finding new birds and naming them. You name them after your friends. You know, he, the Lucy's Warbler is named, you know, after his wife. And then there's, um, you know, a lot of other explorers. Did you know? Uh, I'm going to show you one example that you probably do not know. All right, let's get this to work. That this bird was named by Napoleon's nephew. Absolutely. This is a Bonaparte's uh, gull, and we see them here in, in Missouri in the winter, but uh, uh, Napoleon Bonaparte's nephew was an explorer and an ornithologist, and he named that bird. So, there, you know, there are birds named after lots of famous people. Um, the Wilson snipe is one of several birds that there's lots of Wilson's. So when you're looking at like Wilson's warblers and, and, and uh, Wilson storm petrels, Alexander Wilson is considered the godfather of American ornithology. So he was a very famous ornithologist. And so there are several birds named after him. Uh, Lewis and Clark, whenever they uh, explored uh, on their journey, they agreed at the beginning, because they knew they'd probably be finding a lot of new things. They agreed not to or only name one animal after each other. Uh, different. So we have the Lewis's woodpecker, which we rarely see in this area, and the Clark's nutcracker. Both are western birds, but Lewis's woodpecker, named after a, uh, Meriwether Lewis, and uh, William Clark, the Clark's nutcracker. So there there are those names out there, and they're usually famous people from our history that, that you know either discovered them or they were named in honor of, uh, you know, that were discovered later. So there's a lot of those names out there. So, but there are lots of other ways that birds are named. How about where they were, maybe where they were first seen? The Tennessee Warbler. They're not that common in Tennessee, but it, that's really where it was first collected and first documented. And so the Tennessee Warbler gets the name Tennessee. Now, one that is a little more accurate than that um, is one of our favorite birds. If I can ever find the picture, oh, it's the very first one, the Carolina Wren, state bird of South Carolina, very common bird of the South. We talk about how in this part of the world these harsh, cold winters take their toll on Carolina Wrens because they are a very southern bird, but it named a bird named after basically the area from which it is more common and there is named. And like I said, the Tennessee Warbler is an example of one that didn't work. It, <laughs> it's not that common in Tennessee, but that's where it, the name has stuck with it and that's where it's named, what it's named for. Um, the, another thing that birds are named for and very commonly is the sound they make. How about the chickadee-dee-dee? -dee -dee? 
chickadee dee dee, and of course black cat, just physical appearance, but the sound that it makes. And there are others that um, are, are very famous for that. Where is my, yep, the Bob White. Bob White, one of the most famous songs out there. It is a quail, but the name is named after its song. So the, the Bob White's a good, good, good example of birds that, uh, a bird that's named after a song. Here's one that uh, used to be called Black Chinned Bunting. It, 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 you can see that, but they changed the name to Dick Sissel because of the sound that it makes, the song that it makes. Dick Sissel is what they, and I don't, I like Black Chin Bunting better, but that's a, um, Dick Sissel is the name of that bird exclusively because of its song. Um, and then, of course, there are birds that are named after their physical appearances. I uh, tell the story about uh, an exchange student which was on a hike with us at uh, Martha Lafitte years ago. And he said, he, he pointed and he said, what's that red-winged blackbird called? And then it was the red-winged blackbird. And they nailed it exactly. So that's a, a name that actually really, really does work, is a, a, a named after its physical appearance. Um, how about this one? I like this one. I hope I can blow it up enough where you can see. This is a red cross bill. And if you can see, hopefully you can see that, that bill is crossed like that and po for popping out the, the seeds out of those pine cones. So red cross bill named after color and physical appearance. So that works. How about one, another one of our favorites? The tufted titmouse. Now, what is, uh, this is a, the reason this comes from, again, this is a, a name that comes from the old world. Uh, in Eurasia, in England and, and those countries, there's a whole family of birds called the tits. And tits literally just means small. And so the, the, the titmice and, uh, is a member of that family. And tufted, of course, for this big tuft on his head, makes sense there. So um, this can also be a, a controversial thing. The first state bird of North Carolina, where I'm from, was the Carolina chickadee. But the lawmakers there decided that because uh, the, the negative connotation of the word tomtit, which is a slang term in the old world for cripples, uh, people with handicaps, that they didn't want that uh, associated with them, so they changed the state bird of North Carolina from the Carolina chickadee to the northern cardinal. So uh, names sometimes have to be changed. And who changes those names? Well, there is the IOU, the International Ornithological Union, and then there's the AOU, the American Ornithological Union, and those groups are, you know, get have requests sent to them uh, for name changes or naming of new birds, etc. And they study all the data and make the final decision uh, whether to change a name or keep a name. And so that can be confusing too, because many of you will remember this bird as a sparrowhawk and some of you still call the American kestrel the sparrowhawk. Well that got changed because in the old world in Europe uh, and especially in the old world there were birds already in place with these names long before we named the birds in this country and the name sparrowhawk was already applied to bir a bird in the old world. So instead of having two birds with the same name, uh, they, the, the ornithological community had to change it to bring the, those back in line. So this got changed to American kestrel, which there are kestrels in, in Europe as well. There's Eurasian kestrels that look a lot like the American kestrels, and they're closely related. So they sometimes name changes are made to... Um, Make straighten things out in the world, you know, so there's not conflicts, and so that's a, that's a, so people go well. I still call it call it sparrowhawk. That's okay. You can do that. There's lots of local names for birds, especially, and that's one that uh, that certainly applies. Now here's another one that, that that got changed. If you've been birding a long time, you remember this as uh, the marsh hawk. Uh, today it's known as the northern harrier, and this was also a conflict with old world birds that they had to change to bring in alignment. This is actually uh, a northern harrier, and it looks a lot like a bird in, uh, in, in 
the old world they call them hen harriers and they are related and, and, and could be the same species too but they uh, their the name changes got brought into alignment that's another example of that uh, here's one that's uh, it's going to transition into birds that are named after their the way they act um, the uh, good friend of mine who got me started bird watching years ago the grandfather called these field drivers because they the way they act and they just cruise up and down low to the ground up and down fields uh, listening for mice and things in the grass they can jump on them so uh, a bird that you know very much is associated with the way it acts people would know that um, one that is uh, in our backyards almost every time every day during the spring is the brown thrasher the thrasher is named for its kicking and, and thrashing under the leaves and looking for bugs and food underneath there and that, so they thrash about and they thrash the soil they actually use that big bill to dig in the soil as well so a bird that is act, named after the way it acts so now there are some favorites um, can you maybe I know but can you guess the name of that bird yep yellow-headed blackbird that's about as easy as it gets they uh, the yellow head black body you know, it's a black bird, you know, the yellow head. So that's one. That, there are some that actually do make sense, and that, that's a, a good example of it. Um, and then there's some that do not make sense at all. And people, are, they get confused people. So why is that bird called the northern cardinal? Obviously. Yeah, okay. Yep. Yep. It is named from the Catholic Church, the rank in the Catholic Church, which is associated with the color red. And so, again, a very old naming. Um, this is a member of, uh, the cardinal is a member of the group of grosbeaks, meaning large beaks. So why wouldn't you just call this bird red grosbeak? You know, because that's exactly what it looks like. But uh, whenever they named it back in the old times, they, they in honor of the Catholic Church, they did that. And... The rose-breasted grosbeak, you can see the bill is basically the same as the cardinal, so they're they're closely related. But the, this one is named for physical feature. Rose, the rose on the breast. There's a famous story about a lady in Texas years, many years ago, back in the early '60s, who reported that there was a, a, a kid in the neighborhood that had a BB gun and was shooting her birds. And when the, the, they, the policeman came to see it, what it was all about. She had a bunch of rose-breasted grosbeaks in spring migration, and she thought this was blood on their chest because they, uh, they she, that's, she'd never seen the bird before, and so she thought these were dying, you know, they were shot. So the rose-breasted grosbeaks named after that. But And then another bird that is named after uh, the Catholic Church, a rank in the Catholic Church, is the prothonotary warbler, which is a rank in which the, the color yellow was associated with their robe. So... Uh, that's another one. So names come from lots of different uh, uh, inspirations. Um, some of them make sense. Some of them don't make sense. Uh, they, some of have been changed, which is really cool. Um, and there's, if you want to study it, it's fascinating. There's books written on the topic. You know, you can find a lot of things on the internet if you're, if there's a, if there's a bird you're curious about, you can always go on and look it up more. But that's a kind of a fun topic. You know, bird names are. Uh, it, it, it's something that's always fascinated me, and so I, uh, I enjoy passing that along.